So let's talk about security in Kubernetes and service accounts. So to access the Kubernetes API server, you need an authentication token. The processes that are running inside your containers use a service account to authenticate with the Kubernetes API server. Just like a user account represents a human, a service account represents and provides an identity to your pods. Each pod you create has a service account assigned to it, even if you don't explicitly provide the service account name. If you don't provide the name, Kubernetes will set the default service account for your pod. This default service account is called default and it is in every namespace in Kubernetes, which means that account is bound to the namespace it lives in. You can try creating a new namespace and then listing the service accounts and you'll see there's an account, a uh, service account called default. So if I create a new namespace, so let's say create kubectl create namespace my new namespace. And then if I list the service accounts, in my new namespace, you'll notice that there's a default service account that has a one secret and it's only six seconds old. So I'll be using a uh, mini cube. So we're going to start by creating a pod to see where the service account gets specified. So I'm just going to do kubectl run simple, uh, simple pod, and it's going to use the nginx image. In order to look at the YAML representation of this pod, you can use the output flag and then specify YAML. So we're going to do kubectl get pod simple pod output YAML. And let me just grep for service account name. And you'll notice that the service account name is set to default. We haven't explicitly set anything. So Kubernetes assigned this default service account name to our pod. So let's look at how this service account looks like. So let's do describe service account, SA is the short name, and the name of the service account is default. So like any other resource, the service account has a name, namespace, and labels and annotations. Additionally, service account has the image pool secrets, mountable secrets, and token section. If we defined image pull secrets, uh, these are then used by pods to pull the images from uh, private Docker registries, Kubernetes would automatically add those to all pods that are using this service account. The mountable secrets fields is specifying the secrets that can be mounted by the pods that are using the service account. Finally, the, token, uh, the tokens field lists all authentication tokens in the service account. Kubernetes also automatically mounts the first token inside the container. Let's look at the YAML representation of the service account. So we'll do get sa default and output YAML. Now the mountable secret from the account, uh, so this would be the default token Z559D, uh, this gets automatically mounted in each pod under the var run secrets Kubernetes IO service account uh, folder. And the secret then stores uh, the authentication token that's mounted as a token file, namespace name that's mounted as namespace file, and then the public certificate authority of the API server that's get mounted as a ca.crt ca file. So let's look at that. So let's do exec it simple pod, and then we'll do bin sh. And then we will look in the var run secrets, 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 and Kubernetes, Kubernetes.io and service account folder. So we'll have these three files here. We'll have the certificate authority, the namespace. So if we look at the contents, it's default and the actual uh, authentication token. Now, Kubernetes uh, uses different authentication mechanisms or plugins. So client certificates, bear tokens, uh, authenticating proxies or HTTP basic auth to authenticate API requests. So whenever uh, the API server receives a request, the request then goes through all these configured plugins and then the plugins try to determine the request sender. 
the plugins will try to extract the caller's identity from the request. And the first plugin that's able to do that, so the first plugin that can extract that information, will then send it to the API server. Now, the identity of the caller uh, uh, has multiple uh, parts. So it has the username, it has the user ID. So this is the string that identifies the user and it's more unique than just the username. It uh, as a group and group is a set of strings that indicates the groups that a user belongs to. So that could be system administrator or developers and then any extra fields. Now the API server uses this username to then determine if the caller, the caller being the process inside the container, inside your pod, can perform the desired actions. For example, getting the pods list from the API server. Now each service account can belong to one or more groups. And then these groups are used to grant permissions to multiple users at the same time. For example, there's a group called administrators that grants the administrative privileges to all accounts that are part of that group. Uh, and these groups are nothing else but just simple, unique strings such as administrators, admins, developers, etc. So let's go back to the simple pod. So we'll say kubectl exec it simple pod. And then we'll do bin sh. And what we'll do here is we'll try to invoke the Kubernetes API using the service account token that was mounted inside this container. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll just store the token in an environment variable. So we'll say secrets kubernetes.io slash service account slash token. And let's just make sure that I got the path right. Okay, so it's there. Uh, so we'll use this token as the bearer token and then invoke the Kubernetes API. So previously, I think in one of the previous videos when we were listing services, so a list of services, you'll notice that there's the uh, Kubernetes service. So what we'll do is we'll call the Kubernetes API through this Kubernetes service. So let's do this. So I'll just say Kubernetes, sorry, curl, and then authorization, authorization, authorization is going to be bearer and then we'll paste in our token and we'll just call the Kubernetes service in the default namespace on port 443 and we're going to call the API. There you go. So let's say we wanted to show this is just a root. We're calling the, uh, uh, the, the root API that it's saying API versions. Okay. So there's a V1 version of the API. So the next call that we could make, and I'm just going to copy paste this, this, uh, oh, it's not going to work. I guess I'll have to type it. So let's just type the same thing. Author authorization bearer token. HTTPS Kubernetes dot default four four three API v one. So this would be uh, the v one version of the API, and this is telling us that there's uh, all the different uh, APIs and uh, uh, that, that correspond to the resources uh, in the cluster, right? So this gives us that list. Now let's say if we wanted to access uh, or get the information about our simple pod specifically. So let's do curl SSK H authorization bearer token token. And then we'll do HTTPS Kubernetes dot default uh, 443 API V1. So we'll say namespaces, default namespace. Uh, we want the pods and we specifically want the simple pod. So there you go. Notice that the message that we got back is saying the pod, simple pod, uh, because that's the identity, that's the token that we used. It's saying that the user system service account default default. So note the first default in the name is the namespace name. And the second one is the service account name. So what it's saying is that this user cannot get the pods from the default namespace. Uh, what we could do is we could add this default service account to a group that has more permissions. However, that would be a horrible idea because remember the default service account gets added and automatically assigned to each pod if the pod does not specify its service account. Uh, 
Now, a much better practice is to create a new service account and then explicitly set it for that pod. So let's do exit here and clean up, and then we'll see uh, how we can do that. So I'll delete this pod. All right, go. Cool. 